do you feel about a musical alarm clock? Oh, where's the damn snooze button? Whoa, okay, I'm off. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, with new updates come new equipment, and with new equipment comes upgrades to our favorite builds. Personally, my main weapon, my favorite weapon in all of Rise and Sunbreak is the Hunting Horn. There's just something special about the flow of this weapon to me, and while the original best Hunting Horn build I shared with all of you is based on Raw Attack and Sonic Bloom, Title Update 1 has definitively swapped where the crown lays when it comes to Hunting Horns. In base Sunbreak, it was already relatively close between raw and elemental, with sometimes elemental taking the crown, with a few good monsters actually being better to use the elements against due to their hit zones. But now, due to a certain metal wyvern's armor, we have a new skill that makes it absolutely the strongest way to play this weapon, Elemental Hunting Horn. The main reason for this is a new silk bind in Sunbreak called Silkbind Shock Wave. This is a little flip that has hyper armor, and then after using it, every attack will have a delayed pop shock wave. But unlike most shock waves that Hunting Horn produces, these are effective specifically extra by element. For example, the old best raw damage build when hitting the head of the detraining dummy causes a silkbind shockwave pop of 26 damage before chain crit takes effect. And it's worth noting that raw damage builds haven't really gotten much better in this title update, at least not in solo play. The elemental builds that I'm showing you today hit for 97 on the same pops, three times as much, and then a little bit more on top. But then we are also using Beat of Resonance with all of these builds to get attack up, which boosts the damage of the pops to 99 9 before chain crit takes effect, count in chain crit, then affecting both raw and element damage, and it isn't rare to hit a monster for a silkbind shockwave pop in the three digits, over 100. Think of it this way, every time you connect with a monster in one of these builds with the silkbind active, add 100 damage to that number in these builds, and that is what makes it just so damn strong. Yes, we are using dereliction to achieve this, and I know many people aren't big fans of dereliction, but it's also worth noting that three out of the five horns used for elements have health recovery songs as some kind, and those especially in combination with the gourmet fish item, which I always recommend to use with Dereliction, pretty much completely negate the health drain from this skill. The other two horns are a bit dangerous, but there is simply no way to reach these heights without the skill, and these are the best hunting horn builds for a reason. You're goddamn right. So essentially, your goal is to hit a monster in its weakest body part as frequently as possible while also building up your Infernal Melody Gauge, making sure to also sharpen once every 90 seconds to maintain purple sharpness permanently. This means using combos like the Crush Perform on loop in general combat to build your gauge, and things like Multi Crush into Kick on repeat when a monster is down to just create as many hits as possible in a short period of time. One thing you may know if you've tried playing like this is that that combo eats up sharpness ridiculously fast. Well, that's why it's a good thing that every build today is built around protective polish. The main reason all of this works is quite simple. Hunting Horn benefits more from attack and element than it does from affinity, as affinity has no effect on shockwaves, which make up anywhere from 40 to 50% of our damage depending on how you are playing. So instead we focus around giving ourselves both extremely high element numbers and extremely high raw attack, as well as focusing on sharpness, which also affects shockwaves, and mostly leaving affinity by the wayside. With that explained, let's first talk about the switch skills. For pure damage, which is what these builds are about, both overhead smash and melody mode performance are pretty much necessary. The third slot is personal choice, but I prefer the default crush attack combo myself. Beat of Resonance is what I'll be using with every build today, partially because it gives the attack up song to all of these horns that don't have it, but also pretty much every horn in use today has either a burst healing song or the sonic wave song, which get doubled by Beat of Resonance, making them even stronger. And then in the last slot, of course, we use Silkbind Shockwave, as it is entirely what makes Element so strong with this weapon in the first place. When it comes to our weapons of choice. For fire, we have the Rathalos Hunting Horn. It comes with the highest fire element of any hunting horn. It also has a Rampage 3 slot, meaning it can fit the Elm Bane decoration, which boosts elemental damage by 20% when hitting an elemental hit zone of 25 or higher. It has the Element Attack Boost song as well as Sonic Waves 2. And it comes with 10 hits of purple sharpness naturally, making it perfect to build protective polish around to preserve the purple sharpness. For ice attack, we are going with the Auroracanth Horn. This is undoubtedly the strongest ice horn. It can't fit the Elm Bane decoration but nothing comes anywhere close even still, and for any of these that can't fit Elembane, we use the appropriate anti-species decoration based on the monster you're fighting for a 5% damage boost. It has two two slots, which is great for skill management, the health regeneration song, which is great for offsetting the drain from dereliction, and also the stun negation song, which is just nice to have in general. As well, with handicraft, we can boost this one up to 10 hits of purple sharpness, slot in protective polish, and then it reaches its true potential. For thunder, we are using the Narwa hunting horn, as it is just the strongest thunder one available, 
This one required one handicraft to breach purple sharpness, letting us achieve the same goals. And it also has two different healing songs to offset the drain of dereliction, as well as the stun negation song as a bonus. For water, we are going to use the Royal Ludroth horn as it has the highest water element, and also a three slot rampage slot to fit the Elm Bane deco, but it is worth noting that the Mizzetsune horn isn't crazy far behind and has a healing song. So if you prefer the safety of a healing song when using dereliction, this is a completely viable choice to swap to for a bit of damage loss, which is probably worth it for the average player, but again, today I am showing the strongest build, the strongest versions of these builds, and so I am foregoing comfort in exchange for pure offensive performance in what I am showing you now. And then finally, for the dragon element, for this style of build, the best choice is the Manabra Hunting Horn. The Valstrax Horn is a close second, but it can't reach purple sharpness, which lowers its ceiling in comparison to the Manabra Horn, which also gets to use the Elembane Deco and has a health recovery song as well as large earplugs, which is just nice to have around. I can't hear you. At this point, it's worth mentioning the five pieces of armor that we are using today are identical for each element, with the major differences being in the way that we augment the weapons and the decorations that are used. So let's talk about the weapon augments first. Both the Auroracanth and Ludroth Hunting Horns require three handicraft to reach purple sharpness. So instead, for those two, we will be using a sharpness augment, which is equivalent to one handicraft, and then the second rank of the element augment for plus six element. On the other three horns, we are simply using one attack augment for plus five raw, and then the third rank of element augment for plus nine elements. For your talisman today, we are using one that has three attack and a one slot. If you have something that is two attack and a two slot and a one slot, that would technically be even better, but that is a little bit harder to find. The armor pieces themselves are the hidden Itsushi head or channeler head for female characters, the silver Rathalos chest piece, and then the guys Magorm arms, waist, and legs. In the fire set specifically, we have a slight amount of extra space as the silver Rathalos chest also comes with three fire attack, and so we use two blaze jewels to finish that off, one sharp plus jewel and one sharp jewel for all three ranks of protective polish, two attack jewels to finish off attack boost, a sonorous jewel and two tenderizer jewels to finish off weakness exploit. I know we said we weren't focusing on affinity today, but weakness exploit is just way too valuable for its low cost, even if we are ignoring affinity otherwise. After this, in the fire build, you will have a one slot and a four slot free to do with as you please. The one slot should go either to stun resistance or speed sharpening, and the four slot depends on your goals. If you really want to dig into max offense and nothing else, then put in a furrer deco for another rank of resentment, but this can be better used on something like a hard steadfast jewel for full stun resistance, or a jumping plus jewel for two ranks of evade extender, which I find make it far more comfortable to play personally. For the sake of showing the skills, I put in a hard steadfast jewel, and so with this, the full skill list for the fire attack version of this build is 7 attack boost, 5 fire attack, 3 stun resistance, 3 weakness exploit, 3 protective polish, 3 dereliction, 2 resentment, 2 razor sharp, two spare shot, two chain crit, horn maestro, one rank of crit element, one speed sharpening, one wire bug whisper, and one rank of element exploit. The new skill from Silver Rathalos armor which makes this properly shine. It increases element damage when hitting an elemental hit zone of 20 or higher, and one rank is the sweet spot as it gives you 10% just for the one rank. The full mass of this with the fire hunting horn in mind, for raw attack we have 310 base attack, plus 10 for attack boost, plus 12 for chain crit 2, plus 10 for resentment which makes 342 raw, times 1.1 for attack boost, times 1.1 for attack song from our beat of resonance, times 1.39 for purple sharpness, and then for weapon hits we also include affinity, which we have 50% with no crit boost, for a 12.5% damage increase for a total effective raw of 647.1. If we then remove the multiplier from the affinity and instead include a 1.1 times multiplier for horn maestro, we have our raw shockwave damage which is 632.7. As for element, things get a little bit more complex. Complex. We have 54 base on the weapon with augments applied, plus 4 for fire attack, plus 20 for dereliction, plus 10 for chain crit, which makes 88. Multiplied by 1.1 for element attack song on the weapon, times 1.2 for the element bane decoration in the weapon, times 1.2 for fire attack skill, times 1.1 for element exploit, times 1.25 for purple sharpness, and interestingly enough, silkbind shockwave pops aren't affected by horn maestro, so our final number for those attacks is 191.7. 
7. As for the weapon hits, we actually have one rank of crit element in here as well, so we multiply that number by 1.025 for 50% affinity and a 5% boost to element attack on crits for a final effective element of 196.5. At this point, we should talk about the armor augments before getting into the other builds. Given the rarity of your armor pieces, you are extremely unlikely to hit an S tier skill like attack boost, so we aren't really going to be aiming quite that high. First up in the Itsushi helmet is this is the lowest rank armor piece of the bunch, it has the highest potential for skill gain from armor augmenting, and so we are going to specifically aim to get our final rank of chain crit in this helmet. It is possible to get this skill on our other armor pieces, but significantly less likely, so realistically you want to aim for this skill in here, as the final rank of this is quite important, boosting our raw by 3 and element by 5, and it's just hard to get in the other pieces. In our other armor pieces we have a bit of a priority order. You want to aim for one rank of protective polish, followed by as much resentment or handicraft as you can. Resentment is preferred, as not every build requires handicraft, but all of them can benefit from more ranks of resentment. Past this, slot upgrades are quite good for this build. For example, the Silver Rathalos chest with one slot upgrade will turn a one slot into a two slot, which is very valuable. With a second slot upgrade will turn a three slot into a four slot, which again is extremely valuable. On the contrary, if you get enough one slot upgrades on other pieces of armor, you can fill those up with your element attack and free up slots elsewhere. So that is your priority order for armor augments, though none of these are necessary for the build to function in the first place. Bonus. Other than that, feel free to aim for any utility skills that you'd like. As I mentioned before, I am a particular fan of Evade Extender with the Hunting Horn, so if you get any ranks of that, they are worth keeping if you aren't aiming for 100% offensive perfection, and you may notice that the footage that I'm using has two ranks of Evade Extender in it as a result. Moving on to the other element builds then, the armor is the same again, but the decorations change. For the Ice Weapon, we are using a Hard Frost Jewel, two Little Frost Jewels, the Sharp Plus Jewel, as well as a regular Sharp Jewel for full protective Polish, two attack jewels, one sonorous jewel, two tenderizer jewels, and then two handicraft decorations to just barely reach purple sharpness. The full list of skills for the ice build without armor augments is attack boost 7, ice attack 5, weakness exploit 3, fire attack 3, which does nothing for us here, protective polish 3, dereliction 3, resentment 2, handicraft 2, razor sharp 2, spare shot 2, chain crit 2, critical element 1, horn maestro, wirebug whisperer 1, and element exploit 1. For our raw attack additives that would put this weapon up to 352, and then with multipliers is a full effective raw of 666. I am complete. And removing the affinity and instead counting Horn Maestro, our general shockwave raw with this one is 651.2. For our element, this one doesn't fit the Elm Bane deco, which changes it a little bit, but our additives make for 108, and then with our multipliers included, we have 178.2 for our Silk Vine shockwaves, and with crit element included, our effective element on this weapon hits themselves is 182.7. For the Thunder build, our decorations are going to be a hard bolt jewel and two little bolt jewels, the sharp plus jewel, two attack jewels, one sonorous jewel, two tenderizer jewels, and one handicraft jewel. This build and the two following only have two protective polish in them due to a lack of weapon decoration slots unless you get the final rank from your armor augments, so this becomes a main goal for the thunder set and the dragon and water ones as well. The total skills for this one then are 7 attack boost, 5 thunder attack, 3 weakness exploit, 3 fire attack, 3 dereliction, 2 resentment, 2 razor sharp, 2 spare shot, 2 protective polish, 2 chain crit, 1 crit element, one handicraft, horn maestro, one wirebug whisperer, and one element exploit. The raw attack on this one with additives goes up to 357, and with multipliers the full effective raw is 675.5. Removing affinity and factoring in horn maestro, our raw for shockwaves is 660.5. Our element including additives goes up to 103. With multipliers included we wind up with 170 on our silkbind shockwave pops, and a total effective element on our weapon hits of 175. 4.2. For the water build, our decorations are a hard stream jewel and two little stream jewels, the sharp plus jewel, two attack jewels, one sonorous jewel, two tenderizer jewels, and two handicraft jewels. As well, you have two extra one slots which I recommend either grinder or steadfast echoes to fill it in. Personally, I went with the stun resistance. The total skills of the water build then are seven attack boost, five water attack, three weakness exploit, three fire attack, three dereliction, two resentment, two handicraft, two razor sharp, two spare Spare shot, two protective polish, two stun resistance, two chain crit, one critical element, horn maestro, one wirebug whisper, and one element exploit. The raw attack for this, including the additives, goes up to 352, and once again with the multipliers, this one hits 666. Bye. 
and once again removing affinity and counting in general shockwaves, we have 651.2. For our element in this one, we once again get the return of the Elembane Deco. With the additives, our element hits 90, and then with multipliers, we get it up to 178.2 on the Silkbind Shockwave Pops, and a full effective element of 182.7. Then finally, our Dragon Builds decorations are a Heart Dragon Jewel, two little Dragon Jewels, the Sharp Plus Jewel, two Attack Jewels, one Sonorous Jewel, two Tenderizer Jewels, and two Handicraft Jewels. Once again, we have the extra two one slots in the weapon, and I'm going to be using them for stun resistance. The full skill list for this one then is exactly the same as the last one, with the only change being that we have five dragon attack instead of five water attack. And for this last bit of math, the raw attack on this with additives is 357, and the full effect of raw is 675.5. If we then once again take off the affinity multiplier and replace it with Horn Maestro's multiplier, we see that we get 660.5 for our shockwaves. For element with additives, this one reaches 81, and then with multipliers factored in, we reach 160.4 on Silkbind Shockwave Pops. And with affinity and crit element counted as well, our full effective element on weapon hits is 164.4. And that is all of them. A hunting horn build for every single element in the game, taking advantage of raw attack bonuses as well as elemental bonuses to really pump the most that we can get out of our hunting horn without going down the route of crit, as shockwaves just aren't affected by affinity in the slightest. This just makes sense as the best avenue for increasing hunting horn damage overall. Hit the monster loads and watch those numbers go up. You'll be amazed what a horn can do in the right hands against the right target. Thank you all for sticking around, and I really hope you enjoy these builds. I know that I've been getting a hell of a lot of fun out of them, so I hope that you do too. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye